Mia is a 15-year-old girl who is very shy, and lives in a refurbished San Francisco firehouse with her mother, Helen. Despite being socially aware, Mia struggles to establish connections with her peers and finds it difficult to make friends. Consequently, she isn't well-liked at school, and frequently encounters harassment from a cheerleader named, Lana Thomas. However, Mia has a close friend named, Lily, who exhibits similar personality traits as hers. Mia likes Josh, who is popular and also dating Lana. One day, Mia sees Josh and Lana kissing and imagines herself in Lana's place. Later, Mia and Josh compete in a debate contest. Josh is confident and makes everyone cheer for him with his strong opinions. But when it comes to Mia's turn, she stutters and the whole class laughs at her. This makes her feel embarrassed and she runs away while others are making fun of her. When school is over, Mia's mother informs her that her paternal grandmother has arrived in San Francisco from Genovia, and is eager to meet her. Mia is puzzled by this sudden desire to meet, given that her grandmother has never bothered to reach out before. The following day, she visits the address her mother had given her, and finds herself in front of a sprawling mansion. A butler greets her and takes her to her grandmother, Clarice Rinaldi. Mia receives the astonishing news that her paternal grandmother is the Queen of Genovia, a small European kingdom. During their meeting, the Queen discloses that Mia's late father was the Crown Prince of Genovia, and as his only heir, she is now next in line to the Genovian throne. Initially, Mia dismisses the revelation as a joke, but eventually realizes the truth, and is overwhelmed by the realization that she is a princess and now responsible for an entire kingdom. The Queen advises Mia that she will have to relocate to Genovia and adopt a new persona to fulfill her royal duties. Mia, feeling inundated with an excess of information, chooses to flee instead of embracing her royal heritage and assuming the role of a princess. Upon her eventual return home, she directs her anger towards her mother for having kept their royal status a secret. It turns out that after Mia's parents divorced, they agreed to let her live with her mother to experience a regular upbringing. They had intended to reveal the truth to her once she turned 18, but with her father's passing, she has to take all the responsibility. The following day, she, her mother, and the queen discuss the matter. The queen expresses her desire to present Mia to the world as a princess, but she wishes to first train her on the appropriate behavior expected of a princess. Mia strongly objects to this proposal, but her mother tells her to attend the princess class, and then decide whether she wishes to pursue a royal lifestyle afterwards. Till annual Genovian Independence Day Ball, Mia must keep this a secret. To ensure her safety until she is publicly declared as a princess, the queen assigns Joe as her head of security, and caretaker. Additionally, Mia receives a limousine for her daily commute to school. On her way, she picks up Lily who is enchanted by the luxurious car. Mia heads to a car repair shop after school, and discovers that repairing her old car will cost $400. Michael, Lily's brother who works at the shop, has had a crush on Mia for a long time, but she barely acknowledges him. Later, Mia takes her initial princess lesson at the mansion. The queen evaluates her appearance and instructs her assistant on what needs to be improved. Additionally, she educates Mia about the proper posture and hygiene that a princess should possess. After that day, Mia starts to learn about royal etiquette, including dancing, dining, and personal presentation. She attends daily lessons at the mansion after school, which left little time for her to spend with her friend Lily. As Mia is Lily's only friend, Lily feels very lonely for few days. One day, the queen invites to an Italian stylist named, Paolo to give Mia a makeover. At first, he compliments Mia on her natural beauty, but Paolo and his assistant intervened. They pluck her eyebrows, straighten her hair, give her facials and manicures, and even make her switch to contact lenses after breaking her glasses. As a result, Mia looks completely different person. The queen is impressed by her granddaughter's transformation, but she tells Paolo and his assistants to keep it a secret. The next day, Mia and Joe pick up Lily from school and Michael was mesmerized by her newfound beauty. However, Lily is not feeling happy about the makeover. She believes that Mia is becoming like the mean girls at school, and insists that she wear a hideous hat to cover up her new hair. This leads to a heated argument with Lily. Unable to bear her friend's emotional distance, Mia finally confides in Lily about the real reason behind her transformation. To her surprise, Lily understands and agrees to keep it a secret, realizing that it's for Mia's safety. During class, Lana relentlessly bullies Mia to taking off her hat, and everyone is surprised by her stunning new hair. The next day, Michael invites Mia to a music convention where he is going to performing. Being passionate about music, Michael hopes Mia will be there to watch his perform, though Mia agrees to attend, but she does not seem interested. Upon arriving at school, Mia is surrounded by reporters who bombard her with questions about being a princess. Mia is in trouble because her secret has been revealed. She thinks Lily tells everyone, but Lily denies it. The situation gets worse, so the queen comes to the school. They discover that Paolo, the stylist, 
told the media about her to be famous. The next evening, the queen hosts a royal dinner party, and introduces Mia to some other important royal family from different countries. During the dinner, things are going smoothly until Mia accidentally set a guest's sleeve on fire. She quickly put out the fire by dunking his arm into an ice bucket, but as she tries to pick it up, a waiter trips and drops a bunch of fruit on the guests. The queen is embarrassed and upset about the disastrous dinner, but the guests find it funny, and didn't mind. In the next season of training, Mia expected the queen to be angry with her, but the queen is actually very kind. She cancels all her appointments to spend the day with her granddaughter. They have fun at the arcade, where the queen plays Mia's favorite games, takes photos with her in a booth, and tries her favorite snacks. On the way home, Mia drives but the brakes failed while going uphill, causing a collision with a crowded cable car. The police almost arrest Mia, but the queen convinces them to release them with her persuasive speaking skills. At the end, he calls a police car to take the royals back home. Mia is impressed by her grandmother's abilities and calls her the best queen. The next day at school, many kids surrounded her, asking for her autograph. Josh, whom she had a crush on for a long time, asks her out to a beach party on Saturday, and Mia agrees to go. She then apologizes to Michael for not being able to attend the conference. Michael feels hurt that she chose Josh over him. In the evening, Mia's mom mentions that Josh only becomes interested in her after finding out she was a princess, but Mia does not care about her comment. The beach party is going well when some reporters come and disrupts the party. Mia and Josh hit in a shack. Josh tries to kiss her, but Mia feels something is wrong, and pulls away. When they come out of shack, Josh forcibly kisses her to give the media a story to report. Lana and her two friends play a mean trick on Mia. They convince her to change her clothes inside a tent, but then they suddenly remove the tent while she is changing. To make matters worse, they call photographers to take pictures of Mia, who is changing. She feels embarrassed and ashamed while trying to cover herself up with a towel. When Mia gets home, she cries in her mother's arms. The next morning, the news shows the last night photos of her with exaggerated and ridiculous headlines, which makes the queen very upset. Mia says sorry for what happened and tells the queen that she does not think she is good enough to be a princess. The queen still invites Mia to a fancy ball, but tells her not to bring her friend Joshua later. Joe explains to the queen that Mia is still a teenager and her granddaughter first, before she is a princess. Both of them think that Mia is capable of being the leader of their country. They believe this because she listened to criticism and changed her behavior. Mia says sorry to Lily at school for not acting like herself lately and for not showing up to a talk show that Lily invited her to. Lily forgives Mia and they make up, deciding to go to the Genovian Independence Day Ball together. In gym class, Josh starts teasing Mia again. She throws a ball at him and beats him in a baseball game to show him a lesson. In the evening, Michael comes to Mia's house to give her back her car from the repair shop. Mia says sorry for not going to his show and asks him to go with her to Genovian Independence Day Ball. Sadly, Michael is hurt and doesn't want to talk to her. He says sarcastically that Josh would look better in a tuxedo. Mia and her geeky friend are having lunch when Lana and her gang start teasing them. Mia is fed up with their bullying and puts ice cream on Lana's dress, making her look silly in front of everyone. Later on, the queen apologizes for being mean to Mia and asks her to give a speech at the ball renouncing her title. The queen also gives Mia a diary that her dad wanted to give her on her 16th birthday. After the queen leaves, Mia gets scared of letting her and the people down with her speech, so she decides to run away to Colorado. She feels like the responsibility is too much for her, and it's easier to run away. She packs her bags, and after that, she reads a letter her dad left for her. In the letter, her dad talks about how important it is for a royal to be brave. He also tells her that he loves her and her mother very much. After reading her dad's letter, Mia feels moved and decides to go to the Genovian Independence Day Ball. She had promised to go by herself, so she has to drive in the heavy rain. Unfortunately, her car breaks down on the way. Meanwhile, Michael gets a pizza delivered with the word sorry written on it. He sees that Mia is trying to make things right and decides to go to the ball with her. Just when Mia feels like giving up, Joe comes in a limo and picks her up. The queen starts the speech when Mia doesn't show up for a long time. But when she sees Mia drenched from the rain, she lets her speak instead. At first, Mia is nervous and stumbles while speaking, but she remembers her dad's words and gives a speech from the heart that touches the audience. After finishing her speech, Mia reveals that she is the princess of Genovia, and everyone claps for her. She is then crowned as the princess. Mia changes into a stunning dress, and dances with Michael. They step out to the garden and Michael confesses his feelings to her, and they finally share a kiss. In the next scene, we see Mia flying to Genovia to officially become a royal. Her mom is moving with her, and Michael and Lily plan to visit during summer vacation. The movie ends with a view of the Grand Palace of the Genovian Royals.